so I've had a unbelievably long time working on this Sony PVM 14N 6U project. Now this is one that I've fully restored and I'm going to jump forward a little bit. I've not finished that restoration video yet, but I did have a huge repair happen right towards the end of this restoration. So I thought it would be more beneficial if I broke the video up and just jumped right into this repair uh, from what happened while I went through and restored this monitor. Now, again, this is the first time I've had a chance to work on the N series really on film. So I wanted to make sure I was very thorough. And so I went through and I recapped this entire PVM. Now that's not a huge job by any means. It was uh, less than 60 caps in total. However, once I had everything finished, all my new caps installed, uh, I was you know, putting the monitor back together, which is the footage you're watching right here behind me. And then I went to turn it on and you'll see in a second here kind of the troubles I had, but just, uh, I really was wanting to show this to kind of bring to the light the truth behind some of these repairs where oftentimes, you know, you put a lot of time, money, and effort into something and it doesn't always uh, work out the first time. It's best to just remember to stay encouraged and hopeful and uh, that way, hopefully down the line, you can figure things out uh, but, you know, when you're, when you're uh, right in the thick of things, sometimes you can get quite frustrated, especially, uh, let me explain a little bit, at this point where I had finally gotten this monitor back together and I was ready to test, I was excited, because again, I had changed every single capacitor, I'd cleaned the entire tube, chassis, and uh, everything else, and I was hoping that it would be a pretty simple job of getting it, uh, you know, restored from this point on, it's, at least my work would have been downhill where I'd just been left to do calibrations. But um, what actually happened was something completely different. So I went to plug it in, again, right after I had uh, recapped and everything and re, you know, put it back together, and I got nothing. Um, well, I didn't get nothing. I didn't get any life to the tube. I did hear the degauss initially ding one time, and then it just fizzled out, like the power fizzled out on it. And uh, I really didn't know what had happened. So I did look around a little bit and um, I was really kind of, you know, starting to feel pressure and, you know, frustration because um, I thought that I had done everything right. Because again, this one worked fine before I decided to recap it. I mean, the, the picture very, wasn't very nice but everything else on it did work fine. So again, I tried to go through and reseed everything, make sure everything was reconnected. I tried a couple more power tests and I really got nothing. So uh, what ended up being down, uh, you know, I, after finally just saying, hey, enough is enough, I had to give it an entire night to sleep on so I wouldn't, you know, just lose my mind. And the next day I said, uh, it's really time to get in here and inspect the board, you know, every inch of it to see what I could have done wrong in my repairs. And so, again, this is probably an hour after I had tried to reseat things. I pulled the chassis two or three times just to see if it was sitting against anything or if anything noticeable was wrong, but there was no, nothing noticeable. So I had to go through and just meticulously, visually check every single one of these little connections. And after I took the time to do all that, I noticed something uh, that was not right about a certain point here on the board. And that is where the positive end of this capacitor that I did replace uh, was attached. It, it originally was attached to the board, but I noticed that it had gotten completely lifted and it had been lifted from this diode right here. This, there's a, uh, there was a thin trace connecting it to the capacitor and then the capacitor was connected to this pad here which actually flowed on down through the monitor a little more. So it needed a new way for that 
current to flow through the capacitor and then down to this pad here. So I was quite happy to actually find that, but I did know that um, I would have to go in and rebuild that, but most likely that's what was causing the issues. And this is after the rebuild. So what I had to do was I stretched out the leg from the other side of that capacitor. When I, when I put heat on it again, that entire uh, pad just lifted right off and attached to my soldering iron. So um, it was definitely just gone. So I stretched the leg of that capacitor. I pulled it through a little bit further, and then I just bent it and touched it to the other end of this diode where it would, should be running the trace. And then I soldered that with plenty of flux and then I made another bridge with just the leftover end of a capacitor leg from here to here. So that way I was rebuilding that point there. And um, I felt like the, this rebuild right here was actually going to work pretty well. It seemed pretty solid. But again, it was like, super frustrating. I know it seems easy when you like you look at it from this video point of view, but it took me a good two hours to find this issue uh, after I had tried to test the monitor and uh, it wasn't working. So this is the capacitor on the other side. It's apparently the, one of the more vital caps in this monitor, C514, but it's not, I mean, this is kind of funny, but this one is one of the smallest, I tried to show it there, but that's one of the smallest capac, cap, uh, that's one of the smallest capacitors on the, on the board. It was a 0.47 microfarad. And uh, obviously one of the more vital ones to work. So anyway, after all that, I finally reassembled the PVM. And I, again, had a pretty good feeling this was going to work. But I wasn't 100% certain. So I put all this together. This is one continuous shot. I just wanted to show it uh, so you didn't have to wait for the monitor to warm up. But it did work. And... Everything uh, worked fine after that. So that was the issue why I was just getting a straight dead monitor. Where we would, so this went from dead to back to life again, all from a tiny trace on a 0.47 microfarad capacitor. So uh, it, it, you know, the monitor looks pretty good right now, but it does need a lot of adjustments on it. And, um, you know, there's it, it, the picture is quite blurry and uh, muddied a little bit and I will be able to tighten that up and I it definitely has some uh, geometry issues that we need to take care of so that's going to be uh, part of a third video so we'll have next you will most likely get to see the video where I've initially taken this apart and I do the capacitor replacement and right up to the edge where the beginning of this video is, so you'll probably be watching this one first, but I thought it would be more beneficial to everybody if they could see this repair video separate from those, because I'm going to call this when you're bringing that PVM back to life, where I thought possibly this was dead. I didn't really know what to do, but it's if you do have a situation like this, I can't re reiterate how important it is to just take a second to step back from the project and even if it was, uh, you know, take a night to sleep on things, rethink things, and then you could come back with maybe a fresh uh, amount of nerves, you know, and uh, fresh energy and ready to get back and, and take care of the monitor because now it looks great and it, it's working perfectly. And eventually, you know, it's going to be really, really crisp up on the picture. And then this one um, will have the full video series and then we'll, I will be listing this one for sale. So uh, I just wanted to show, though, this really, you know, quirky little repair and how one little capacitor can really affect the performance of an entire PVM. So anyway, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And again, look for the other two videos coming on this monitor. Thanks again. I'll see you next time with some more retro content.